So today, we're gonna to figure out how to make all of these bendy bits of wood <laughs> with just a circular saw. Repeatable, thin cuts with a circular saw. What? Let me show you what I'm talking about. I've got a project coming up where I need to cut lots of thin strips of wood. Now I've cut all these little thin strips of oak at the minute, but yeah, they need to be much longer. Now then, I don't have a table saw, as you know, and um, so I will probably be using the bandsaw, but then I also realise that some people have bandsaws that they have a real hard time keeping true, so cutting thin strips might not be very available. And I figured that, uh, yes, you can, cut thin strips on a track saw but once again it, people might not have that but I figured with a, a, a fabulous little circular saw you can probably most people will probably have access to one so if I can make a way of being able to cut thin strips with this I figured that would be worth sharing and that's what today's video is going to be about so let me show you how I get these with this the challenge with cutting thin strips is getting it repeatable. So you can get the same, you can see that I've been trying a whole bunch of different sizes there, but getting the same size every time. And that is a challenge however you cut things. But what I've done here is I've just made this super simple jig and that just makes sure that um, you can cut the same strip every single time, more or less. And uh, it's relatively safe. I'll show you how I've done it. So what we've got is just a couple of um, slots, one at the bottom and one at the top. I've got normal uh, bolts going through. I think these are M6. I 3D printed these little knobs on the end. You don't need to use those. If you don't have those, then using uh, just washers will be fine. And I 3D printed these um, these wing nuts as well. But once again, you can either use wing nuts or you can use bolts, you can use whatever you like. The principle behind this is a simple one. Basically, we've got a bit of wood that goes up against the blade and then it's held in place a certain distance away from the blade. And so you can just freehand cut every single time to get exactly what you want. Now then, for my saw, my blade guard is very, very very sprung. It's um, it's very, very good in that respect. So what I'm going to do, and I don't suggest that you all do this, but um, for, for, for my purpose, I'm going to just tie wrap this open because this isn't going to be anywhere near our hands anyway. So for me, I'm comfortable with that. But if you're not experienced with a circular saw, then please don't do this. Right, so I've got the tie wrap just holding that. Now you do need to absolutely triple make sure that the tie wrap does not in any way inhibit the movement of the blade. Obviously that's not a good thing. But at this point then, we get a piece of wood and we want to get that right up close to the blade. So like I said, I made these two slots. So it's a slot that runs that way and one that runs the same on the other side just for where it is worthwhile on my saw. I'm not going to show you measurements and stuff because that's kind of pointless. It's dependent on the saw. And then on these little bits, these are just little bits of hardwood that I cut a little kind of little uh, wedge out of because that means it will sit flat when I'm putting this saw on it. So all that happens at this point is the saw goes on. And what we want to do to start with is make, make sure that it's smushed right up against the side of the blade. So in this instance, we're right up close to the blade and that gives us our measurements. So I'm going to tighten this down for the moment. Using the wing nuts on the, uh, on the bolts there definitely does make life a lot easier. But right now, this is nice and solid exactly where that is. What I'm going to do next is get my slide rule right up against it. You can use whatever your preferred measurement of um, or way of measuring is. And then I'm going to tighten that in there just so I've got an idea of, uh, of, of what I've got. My hands are not working well today. So this looks to be around three and a half centimetres, so 35 mil. Um, and so that is the zero number. So if I want to cut, say, a two mil um, strip of wood, I'll then move this, instead of doing that, I'll move this from the 35 through to 37. So that's more or less like that. Lock that down, jobs are good in. Now's the awkward bit where you've just got to undo the, um, undo the, the, the clamps that you've put on the, 
on the saw and you're going to try and measure things appropriately. Make sure you check and double check your measurements to make sure that everything is correct. Tighten down your clamps. You can double check the measurement to make sure that you're where you want it to be. And then we can cut things. So what I've done here is I've just screwed this bit of, this has got some finish on it, but walnut um, onto the side of my workbench. And what the plan is, is to be able to move this so we're using the wood as a fence right against the wood that we're cutting. So let's give it a go. And right there, we've got our first slice. Let me cut another one. And we have another one just like that. So we're getting repeatable cuts that are nice and thin and exactly what we're gonna be needing. Now, obviously you can make that as thin or as thick as you want, but uh, yeah, for me, for what I'm making, then uh, little thin strips like this will be fine. Now, what you do have to remember is when you're cutting shorter strips, they can go shooting up inside the blade housing. It shouldn't cause a problem. It hasn't caused a problem for me, but just be aware of that. Make sure you release them and take them out when, when you get to the end. But, um, but no, for me, that's been, uh, that's been pretty damn reasonable. By the way, only about 20% of people that watch these videos are subscribed. So if you do get value from my channel, please do hit that subscribe button and help this channel grow because I'm really proud of it and I'm really grateful to every single one of you that do just that. Thanks very much. Let's get back to it. So I just cut these in the couple of minutes that I've been filming this video and you can see that they are pretty darn good really. We've got a few kind of breakouts and what have you but I have gone super thin to show you what this can do and we've made plenty of thin thin strips. Now obviously if you want to make more you can or thicker you can but uh, for us this has worked a grand job and they're about you know a mil and a half thick something like that so you have to mess around with it to get the right sizing. But uh, yeah, that, all from my little circular saw, makes life way easier. But Dean, just how accurate was that from a sizing point of view? Right, let's go down here and find out. So we've got 1.25 coming on there. We've got 1.31 there. I don't know if these are coming across on camera. We've got 1.4 there. 1.31, 1.41, and so that's it. That's how I cut a whole bunch of strips with just a circular saw making repeatable cuts. Now, I have made sure that my base plate, if you like, if you want to call it that, is much wider than it needs to be, and that's because I can hold it with my other hand, be still be a, a, a nice distance away from the blade, and I can keep things both straight that way and touching the um, the wood at the same time. So I'm uh, I'm able to keep it nice and steady with both hands. Now, if obviously you can make this longer or further out, or you could have a bit that comes up the side so you can hold it on the side. There's all manner of different things that you can do, but this is just my basic way of being able to do thin, repeatable cuts with a circular saw. And uh, yeah, for me, it's worked out just peachy for what I need them to do. And you know, that much walnut to still be bendy because I've cut it into strips just opens up loads of possibilities. So hopefully you found this interesting. Thanks very much. Please leave me your comments down below and I'll see you very, very soon. Bye-bye.